look what I got today. We're gonna install this right now. So when we first started Tesla Bros, it was actually called Tesla Bros back then, and we didn't sell a single thing. We were just trying to create content, try to add value, and one of the very first video that we put out on YouTube was how to install a charger, because that's what I did before I even got the car. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea. I am not an electrician, and I'm gonna say it again, I am not an electrician. But that garnered a lot of views, and a lot of people said we were doing it wrong. So we're gonna put all the haters to rest today, and we're gonna install it the right way. So I got myself um, Gen 3. This is a Tesla high powered wall connector. And this was used, this was for my brother of mine. It's a 20 foot, they actually come in 20 and eight foot. And it's really, really cool. You get this bracket over here, and this is where all the wiring goes in, right? And then there are actual connectors that connect from the back, or sorry, from the back right here, and then just kind of go in like that. But it is a three wire. The minimum requirement that it says on the Tesla manual is six uh, AWG uh, 90 uh, C rated. I think that's what they say in the manual. So uh, that's what you want. But a couple things that's different is the older generation one used to have like a dial. Uh, this one doesn't. Also, this can be controlled via Wi-Fi and you get firmware updates on it. So that's really, really cool. You can do top loaded right here. You could do bottom loaded. We already took that out. You could do right, left loaded. It really just depends on how you would like to install. And then this is the other side, obviously. And then this is the glass plate. We are obviously going to wrap this. I just need to figure out what I want to put on this. I don't know. If you have any ideas, comment below and then maybe we'll wrap it, whatever you guys tell us to. But anyway, uh, this is the holder right here. And then you can see it just connects right here. So fairly, fairly simple. So let's go ahead and talk about what we were gonna do and then what we found out a nice surprise. And we'll walk you through and then we're gonna bring in our electrician. He's awesome, his name's Michael. Uh, he does a lot in Chattanooga. He's helped us out at our warehouse. And uh, we'll put his contact information. So if you are in the Chattanooga or Tennessee area and you need a charger installed, you know, he'll hook you up, literally. So let's go ahead. So most homes will have their breaker in their garage or sometimes in our case, it's in the laundry room. So we have a standard 200 amp breaker, or I believe. And uh, these are breakers, right? And then it actually needs two slots if you're gonna do it because this is gonna be a 60 amp breaker, right? So originally what we had planned on doing is putting a 60 amp breaker over here, right? Wiring it from here all the way uh, inside the drywall over here and then out here and then drilling a hole outwards and then going there and then running conduit on the exterior of the building. So that's what we were originally gonna do. Uh, we don't have a garage here. Um, so that's what we we're gonna do, but then we realized when we went outside that we actually had a breaker outside as well. So we're just gonna go from outside and it makes things so much easier. So we got Michael here and his business name is Michael Banks and Electric. And so what are we gonna do right now? Uh, we're gonna install the Tesla charger. Uh -huh. uh, we're gonna come out of the panel, run a 60 amp line down, and then on the end so the cord reach your car is to plug in. Sweet. Pretty simple, right? Keep it simple. That's so it. So a lot of these guys are gonna ask, okay, how do I keep my electricity bill lower? All right, like I guess like the installation bill lower. What's the number one thing that drives up cost? The accessibility to the panel. Okay. You have an outside panel here, uh -huh. which is textbook perfect. So this is, this is great right here. So everybody just needs to get a house like mine. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. So the first step is to open up your panel. And one trick I learned is you have to pull it and then you push it down. And then what that'll do is it'll stay up like that. Uh, it typically is just a couple screws. You open it up. And once you open it up, you, you can see everything underneath it. So just set it aside. And if you look at the bottom of it, there's gonna be actually like circular holes. And you could punch that out and you could put something like a, like a bracket that can hold the conduit. So we are gonna be using plastic conduit, mainly because we are installing those outside. So we wanted to expand and contract pretty easily. So once you set that L-shaped pipe, uh, you just wanna use PVC glue, or um, they have other names for it. And then you also want to use a bracket. And when you use a bracket, you do want to use uh, something that's not super tight because again, it will be contracting and expanding. This was a three fourth inch pipe. And uh, when you do drill, if you are, you know, we have a bestos. Um, if you do have it, you want to pre-drill because something like this will shatter. So just get a small bit, make sure you pre-drill. And then what we did was I believe every about 
uh, three feet, we put a bracket just so that it's not putting so much weight and tension in one area. So you're going to just do it all over, all the way. Mine was about probably about 25 feet all the way across. Once you get to the end, make sure you measure. We just use a sawzall and then make sure you try to cut it as clean as you can. Or you could just use the specific tool for cutting pipes. And then you put another L-shaped and then you want to put another bracket so that you could put it on your charging bracket. And then you want to mount the, the Tesla bracket onto the, the wall or wherever you're doing it. The next step is you're going to be feeding a wire feeder all the way across. This was a really, really fancy one our electrician had. You pull it and then you're going to start pulling all the wires. So there's going to be three wires, right? So there's going to be ground, hot, and hot. So the green one was the ground and then we had two red. Sometimes you can have different colors so you have a better idea of what's L1 or L2. Uh, but in this case, supply right now is kind of limited and these wires are a lot more expensive than it used to be. So once you get those wires red, two red and one green, you're just going to use electric tape um, and you really want to make it tight. It helps to have someone else. So I fed the wire and then just push it down. And then this is actually already coated. So it's super slick. So really, really easy to feed these wires. And then once you get to the end, unravel the tape and then you want to put your 60 amp breaker. Uh, that's what's rated. You actually get 48 amps, but if you want full power, you do need a 60 amp. And then once you do that, we're going to get started with the ground. Um, cable man management is really important, so you don't want too much slack or anything. So once you measure how much you need, cut your wire, and then we're going to start grounding this, right? So uh, having a wire cutter is really, really important. So you can um, get it really clean. And then you're going to be using a screwdriver and then tightening up or loosening it up first and then tightening up the ground first. So the next step is going to be one of the hot, right? So we have two reds. So same thing you want to do. You want to make sure measure it. You can see that he kind of uses his thumb and he cuts the wire. And then you're going to be doing the same thing for both, you know, strip the wire and then uh, loosen it up. And then it'll really feel it, it'll slot right in, right? And you'll feel that it's slot all the way in. And then once it's in, you really want to tighten this. This is something that you don't want to be loose and you want this to be very, very uh, hard contact, right? So you want to do this for both uh, hot wires. And remember, when you are doing this, uh, you always do not work on this, obviously, on live electricity. So uh, the breaker is obviously off. So once that's done, what you want to do is you want to loosen up the three um, screws that holds the wires. And you're going to be doing the exact same thing. And what we did was we came from the top. So you just want enough slack to do that. But you want to strip the wire and there's again three wires there's going to be l1 and l2 so two hot and one ground right so the colors you can see the red is a hot one and the green is the ground you want to go on top of it put in the first slot and same thing that you did on the panel you want to make sure this is super tight because you don't want contact to be loose so you're going to be doing that for the rest of the wires right so just make sure you do the same thing keep it clean you don't want wires hanging all around. What Mike does really, really well is he does cable management really neatly. So it looks really pretty and organized. Once that's in, uh, you do want to turn on the breaker. Here we have 240 to hot to hot. We have 120 to ground. 120 to ground. Textbook perfect. Here we have 241, 120, 120, it's perfect. So finally we're ready to put the charger on. Uh, it just kind of slots in and there's actually four screws that holds it on, right? So it's, like, it's gonna be two in the top and two in the bottom and you just wanna hand tighten it first and then go with your uh, impact drill and then just kind of tighten it just a little bit more. All right, and these are provided by Tesla. All right, so we're finally done. The charger is installed and it's time for us to test. So again, the breaker is off. So you should not be doing this while the breaker is on. The first step is going to be just turning it on. One thing that you also want to do is make sure you label it. Uh, this was in the outside, so I don't have a lot of breakers. That's confusing. However, most people will be installing it with their, their main breaker. So you'll probably have your dryer and your other things. So just make sure you label it. 
test it, you need to activate it with your phone. So all you have to do was pretty much, there's a password connected with a Wi-Fi. So connecting to Ha Family, it's gonna take a minute. And then the main reason for this and the difference between Gen 2, like what we talked about, is Gen 2, it doesn't do firmware updates, right? It doesn't connect Wi-Fi, but this one does. So if you're running a fleet of chargers, you can actually turn it off or, uh, at different times and so on. So that's kind of cool. I got my Wi-Fi connected. I got my software. I'm gonna do that later. So I have it set now. The max output is 48 amps right now. It was set to 32 for some reason. I should have set to 48. Maybe the setup was wrong previously, but we have a 60 amp going out here. So your max actual output is gonna be 48 amps, which means it's gonna be about 45 or 44 or 45 miles per hour on your car. So we are good. It is activated. It is running. We're gonna do our first test on the Tesla now. Let's check this out. Get the green. Look at that. And let's go inside and show you. We're getting 16 amps right now, 11 miles an hour. Well, you can see it's gonna get the 48 amps. We are good. So thank you so much, Michael, for this was awesome. No hiccups at all because he's awesome. There you go. Um, <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say to anyone about to get a charger? Uh, just make sure you have your power and your panel, you have room for the breaker and the capacity to put it in. Yeah. So I remember you actually helped us out in a warehouse where you had to move our breakers a lot, if you remember yes. that, and you moved like all that stuff. Yeah, what you can do, you get uh, piggyback breakers or mini 20s and you, or 15s and you move them up to create space inside the panel. So it's, it's, they're by code, it's, it's a, uh, you know, they're from the factory. So you just you move them, put the breaker in, and you got space. Awesome. Or you have to add a sub-panel if there's no space. Yeah, well that costs a lot more money. It does more money. Yeah, way more money. <laughs> Alright guys, so super happy we tested it out. A couple things that I want to talk about is um, within the first five minutes after you turn on the breaker, this is when the Wi-Fi network is actually going to start popping up, and that's when you have to do it. And sometimes you do run out of time, and if you do, you just need to hold this and when you hold this for I forget how many seconds I think it's like 10 or 15 seconds what it'll do it'll reset it and then it'll turn on that Wi-Fi network and then you could connect to it and then go to that uh, IP address I think it's 192.168.92.1 and if you go there that's when you would set it up do your firmware updates and stuff like that so something that's really really cool because I had the older one is that now I can literally just go here and look at my data and i'm going to check a software update just like your car this also has a software update right but um overall this was a really easy install just because i got lucky i got a breaker outside uh, but if you have any questions about installing this let us know in the comments below hopefully you guys are happy since we did a version two of this video and stay charged <laughs>